Roberto Bolle is one of the most famous dancers in the world, with widespread name recognition outside the dance world, particularly in his home country of Italy, where he headlined popular television specials and presented dance works in non-standard venues like the Rome Coliseum. Roberto has performed with many major ballet companies globally and on many noteworthy occasions, such as the opening ceremony of the 2006 Winter Olympics, Queen Elizabeth's Golden Jubilee, and full-length performances on Italian and British television. With model and movie star looks, Roberto has expanded his reach into popular culture, appearing in numerous fashion and style magazines, and as the feature of advertising campaigns. What makes Roberto Bolle one of the most prominent dancers of the late 1990s and early 2000s? This video sheds light on his effortless dancing and refined technique that has made him stand out, particularly in classical roles requiring princely grace and dramatic range. A brief bio before getting to an analysis of Roberto's dancing. Roberto was born in Casale Monferrato, Italy, and began ballet studies at age seven at a local school in Piedmont. He was accepted at the La Scala Theatre Ballet School in Milan at the age of 12. In 1990, Rudolf Nureyev, who was staging his version of The Nutcracker, noticed the 15-year-old Roberto in the studio. Nureyev later chose him to play the role of Tadzio in The Death in Venice. Roberto's rise in the ballet world was meteoric. In 1996, following a Romeo and Juliet performance, 20-year-old Roberto was promoted to principal dancer at La Scala Theatre Ballet. A year later, he left La Scala to pursue a freelance career. Roberto has danced in many leading companies, including the Royal Ballet, American Ballet Theatre, Paris Opera Ballet, the Bolshoi, Mariinsky, and many others. Since 1998, Roberto has been resident guest artist at La Scala, in 2007, he began his association with American Ballet Theater. He performed as a guest artist, partnering fellow Italian star Alessandra Ferri in her final ABT performance. He then joined ABT as a principal dancer in 2009. He danced in the ABT Metropolitan Opera House spring seasons until his final performance for the company in 2019. In addition to his dancing at ballet companies since 2000, he has headlined mixed repertory performances globally known as Roberto and Friends, expanding the ballet fan base. Dancing with some of ballet's biggest names, he presented works in locations outside of standard theaters in the Colosseum in Rome, Duomo Square in Milan, Plebiscito Square in Naples, and San Marco Square in Venice, along with performances in Athens, Istanbul, Beijing, Tokyo, and New York City. tutti che battono mani e piedi a ritmo per, cioè veramente sembrava quasi di essere al tempo dei romani quando i gladiatori entravano <laughs> nell'arena. Roberto has danced on international stages on many important occasions. In 1997, he performed the role of Siegfried in a new Derek Dean production of Swan Lake in London with Princess Margaret and Lady Diana in attendance. In 1999, after three years of restoration, the Royal Opera House in London opened its season and celebrated its reopening with The Nutcracker with Roberto and British star Darcy Bussell as leads. And he appeared at the Bolshoi Theatre to celebrate Maya Plisetskaya's 75th anniversary. In 2002, in a celebration of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth's Golden Jubilee, Roberto performed the Black Swan Pas de Deux in the throne room at Buckingham Palace in the presence of the Queen. The event was broadcast live by BBC and transmitted to all Commonwealth countries. On Young People's Day in 2004, Pope John Paul II was in attendance at St. Peter's Square as Roberto danced a solo to Mozart's Ave Verum in the square. In December 2005, at Covent Garden Opera House in London, he performed Frederick Ashton's production of Sylvia, broadcast by the British Broadcasting Company on Christmas Day. In 2006, the Winter Olympic Games were held in Piedmont, where Roberto was born. Roberto danced at the opening ceremony, representing Italian art. In 2018, he performed The Seasons, that opened the World Economic Forum annual meeting in Davos, Switzerland. Roberto has appeared in a number of popular Italian television shows, expanding his reach in Italy to people with little interest in dance. In 2016, the main Italian TV channel, Rayuno, devoted a primetime Saturday evening slot to him with Roberto Bolle, My Free Dance, with numerous dance and musical segments. In 2018, Roberto was featured in a two-hour Italian variety show on Rayuno TV. Roberto Bolle, Dance With Me, watched by five million people. The show featured dancers including Polina Semyonova and Melissa Hamilton, along with performances by Sting and Lil Buck. The show had sequels in 2019 through 2022. In 2014, he starred in the ENI advertising campaign Rethink Energy with videos directed by Fabrizio Ferri. 
With model movie star looks, Roberto has appeared in numerous fashion style magazines and has been featured in advertising campaigns. For example, Ferragamo featured him in a 2008 promotion, and he was featured in Vogue US magazine in 2009 alongside supermodel Coco Rocha in an editorial spread. Since 1999, Roberto has been a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF, an organization for which he has taken part in a number of initiatives. For example, in 2006, he visited Sudan to raise money for children affected by violence. The World Economic Forum appointed him Young Global Leader in 2009. In 2014, he was awarded the UNESCO Medal conferred in Paris for the universal cultural value of his artistic work. Roberto received two awards and distinctions from the Italian government in 2012 and 2021 for his support of Italian culture. Let's turn to Roberto's dancing and explore why he is one of the most prominent dancers in the world, collecting many accolades and awards over the years. I have had the pleasure of watching Roberto many times at American Ballet Theater, where he was a principal dancer from 2009 to 2019, and his 2013 Roberto and Friends New York City event. I have a segment at the end of this video of my favorite curtain call photos of him, including his final ABT performance. At six foot two inches tall, Roberto is an imposing figure on stage. His dancing is solid with refined technique, consistently on the mark with a pleasing stretched line. He is Mr. Clean with spotless on the mark technique and body placement, just as a dance instructor would teach. With graceful arm carriage, his dancing is effortless, never forced. I have seen Roberto mostly in classical roles, but was impressed with his work in more contemporary roles in his Roberto and Friends performance in 2013, where his substantial range served him well. Although a top-notch technician, he does not stand out on the current razzle-dazzle scale, where some dancers can blast out endless turns and, what was that, leaps. With model looks, Roberto excels in roles requiring princely grace, such as Prince Desiree in Sleeping Beauty, Count Albrecht in Giselle, and Prince Siegfried in Swan Lake. In partnering, he is rock solid, showcasing his partner in secure lifts and supported turns, always generous in showering attention on her. During his time at ABT, he was one of the most robust and consistent male partners. I can't recall any awkward partnering segments with Roberto in charge. In addition, his considerable stature enhances his dramatic timing in story ballets, with multifaceted and believable portrayals of the leading characters. Let's explore several of Roberto's variations. First is his Act II Albrecht variation from the ballet tragedy Giselle from 2005 with La Scala Ballet, when he was about 30 years of age. Roberto portrays Count Albrecht as he visits Giselle's grave in the forest, and he is sentenced to dance to his death by the Willy Myrta. This solo illustrates the effortless quality of his dancing with solid technique, beautiful lines, and graceful arm carriage. This is a high-quality Giselle variation. Take a look at his one-minute variation, and I will be back with commentary. Roberto's Albrecht variation is very standard, starting off his diagonal pass with a double cabriole to the front, a step with two beats. He has nice articulation and separation on his beats, with a unique exaggerated backbend on landing. Then an entrechassis, which is a beating step off of two feet with front right foot switching to the back, then front, then back again, landing on two feet with left foot in front, for a total of six crossings of the feet. More on this step later. He then repeats the segment. He then does transition steps, a PK arabesque to a jeté entrelacé to his next segment. Albrecht unsuccessfully begs for forgiveness from Myrta, then on to a nice double au semble, a leap off of one foot with one and a half turns in the air, landing on two feet. Roberto does a triple pirouette to a fouetté to more turns, finishing in relevé arabesque, then quickly to the corner.
From there, he does a double tour diagonal with his arms in first position in front of his chest, rather than the customary overhead fifth position, with reasonable quality. A double tour is a leap off of two feet with two turns in the air, landing on two feet. He finishes with four smooth pirouettes to a double tour to the floor as the exhausted Albrecht runs out of gas. An impressive section takes place later in Act 2, sentenced to dance to his death as evidenced by Murda's arms crossed at the wrists, pantomime for death, Roberto does 35 entrechassis consecutively, a series that requires top-notch athleticism and stamina. An entrechassis is a standard step for men, but putting together so many in a series and doing it well is rare. Many dancers portraying Albrecht do several series of brise along a diagonal instead. A good entrechassis has a clean separation of the feet, with nicely articulated beats as the turned out legs move from side to side. Also, the dancer's upper body is calm with flowing arms, making the difficult step appear effortless. A dancer with less proficient beats has unclear delineation in the crossings as audience members ponder, what was that? Roberto starts with arms by his side as his upper body is upright and relaxed. Having his arms by his side makes the step more difficult because he cannot use his arms for momentum on the way up. While he continues his rapid beats with a shallow plie for preparation, one arm reaches out and his head turns from the front to the corner to acknowledge Murda. His arm then goes to his heart to seek forgiveness. His arm movements are subtle but very difficult. While the lower body is laboring exponentially as the series progresses, maintaining a relaxed upper body becomes more difficult. Reaching out with one arm creates an imbalance that the dancer must address as he leaps up and down. Other Albrechts do great entrechassis with their lower body, but none can match Roberto's total package of upper and lower body, moving in sync. A great combination of athleticism, technique, and dramaticism flowing with the storyline as Albrecht desperately struggles to survive. This is a superior example of this series of beats. Finally, the last solo is Roberto's Prince Desiree variation from Sleeping Beauty from 2002 at La Scala Opera House, televised live on Rai Cinque Italian Television when he was approximately 27 years of age. Roberto excelled in such regal, princely roles where grace and refinement are necessary. This is the standard Desiree variation. The steps are generally similar among dancers that perform the role. Note his first diagonal, which is similar to Giselle, where he did a double cabriole to the front. However, in Sleeping Beauty, he does a step without a common ballet name, also done by Baryshnikov and Nureyev in the variation. Roberto goes up off of his left foot and does a cabriole to the front with right leg on top, but then switches feet so that the left foot is higher than the right and back again, landing on his left foot. It might be intended to resemble a cabriole with an entrechacatra. However, Roberto and the other dancers perform it like a cabriole with a switch kick. In general, I prefer the double cabriole over this step, but who am I to argue with Roberto, Baryshnikov, and Nureyev? Roberto does a nice controlled double ensemble, as we saw in Giselle. He then does a unique and difficult variant of the solo, a double tour with no preparation after his double ensemble, quite difficult. Most double tours are preceded by a preparation, which gives the dancer more momentum into the tour. Note that his double tour has two revolutions with hips facing the front at the start and finish, without any cheating. In general, the quality of his double tours is superior in this variation relative to his Giselle variation. Then on to his chute leaps in a circle, known as en manege. At first, his chute are in attitude, leg bent behind him. He then changes to a straight back leg, then to a simple finish, a regal variation with superior technique and grace. Take a look at his one-minute variation, and I will be back with curtain call photos of Roberto.
I had the pleasure of seeing Roberto many times when he was at American Ballet Theater from 2009 to 2019. I have taken many photos of Roberto during his curtain calls and posted them on my photography website, notmydayjobphotography.com, linked in the video description. Photographing Roberto was an easy task as it was difficult to take a bad shot of him. He has a relaxed, never strained smile that produced many great images. The difficulty was deciding which great photo I should post out of many candidates. Here are photos of Roberto after a great performance of Sylvia outside the stage door at the Metropolitan Opera House in 2013. There were many fans waiting for Roberto. He was patient, generous with his time as he chatted and signed autographs for his many fans. Also, photos at his Roberto and Friends production at New York City Center in 2013. Here are photos of Roberto in his final ABT performance in 2019. Emotions were high as he was one of the most popular dancers in the company, with many adoring fans, some traveling great distances to see him. What do you think of Roberto's dancing and his contributions to ballet? What were your favorite performances of Roberto? Please leave thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for tuning in.